Hi, we're back and we're talking about access to fresh water. And this is Kai. Say mm -hmm. hi. Hi. Uh, this is topic 4.2, and it's really looking at um, inequality of distribution for that water, um, people's access, and it's looking at uh, the amount of water hitting regions, and does that actually always mean that they have water? And it's looking at also how this leads to conflict. You know what conflict is? No. People fighting. Rah, 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 rah. We don't like fighting, do we? No. No, we don't. Um, we're going to also look at uh, sustainable management, too, as we get through this. How to avoid fighting. We don't want to fight, so how do we fix the problems? That's kind of what we're after. Right? Talking. Talking. See, this Use kid your knows. words. Perfect. Exactly. So let's let's click through here, and you're going to see some, some water drops with the earth inside and they're going to drop down into this picture. I use that as a trick to try to make my students keep watching because it's kind of fun when these things happen and everybody looks at the screen and goes, what? Where did that stuff go? Well, let's go and find out. So here's the first slide that we're looking at and this shows that water is not evenly distributed uh, around the world. And we can see a couple climographs in the corner. Okay, these are climographs. <gasps> They're graphs over there. Those the are bars. measuring things. Measuring things, exactly. And the bars measure the amount of water. And the line tells you how hot it is in these things. And so hot. So hot. And a lot of water in these different places, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we're going to look at extreme differences here. And we're going to go and follow two places. Atacama, Chile, the driest place on the planet. And we're going to go to Sherpunji in India, which is the wettest place on the planet. And you can see some pictures here in a second. So let me push a button to see what happens. Oh, here it comes. This is Atacama. And here it's a desert with no water, as little as 15 millimeters of water a year. Remember with your measuring tape, 15 yeah. millimeters is about that much. In the oh, whole year, that's a little bit. It's a little bit. That's all they get. They don't get a lot of water there. You can see it in the bar graph down here. There's not a lot of water that goes there, and it's just very, it's just a few months of the year. Let's look at Cherapunji. Where is this? This is in India. And we go all the way over here. And this is the wettest area in the world. You know how much water they get a year? No they get 12,000 millimeters a year. Oh, little, little a giant waterfall. Yeah, lots of waterfalls in Cherapunji. That's over 12 meters of water a year. The most recorded water in Cherapunji in one year was 1985, and it was 1.2 meters in one hour. That's as big as you are in That's one hour. That's as big as me. That's, oh, my God. Wow, so much water in one hour. Wow. So here we look at Cherpunji, a beautiful picture of all the waterfalls there. Um, right next to each other. Yeah, lots. Um, one of the questions that comes up is why might and the right, supply... And Go right ahead. next to trees and in the middle from the waterfalls there are even also trees. Yeah, so I'd like them out there to think about this question. Um, why might the supply not always meet the demand? In other words, you have a lot of water, but why are people in this area not always having access to clean, fresh water? A couple of reasons. If you look at the climograph and you look at the blue bars, are they big or small in January, Kai? Right here. Small. And what about here in July? giant so if you get flooded and you get a huge deluge of water in july it's going to be super hard to manage and if you don't have any in december you don't have any so that'll be a challenge uh and that also links in with something called infrastructure and they don't have uh the greatest infrastructure in this area to manage that crazy uh change in water supply and if there's a hundred water it might even overflow uh, and how do inside all of the houses? Yep, and so, that's infrastructure, buddy. And you have to make sure that your door is locked when all of, when that on July to 
then what if it overflows and Tank wants to come in your house? So lock your door then. I hope, I hope you're taking notes on this. Okay. And so, think about it. Yeah, think about it. Exactly. Check yourself. Here we go. What do you think? You predicted the next question. That's pretty cool. It says, what do you think? Which of these can result in poor infrastructure for water services? And we're going to make them, we're asking them that question. Is it lack of skills, lack of finance, lack of political will? Hmm, let's think. Well, take a second, think. What do you think the answer is? It's a trick question. Don't tell them it's a trick question. Because it's all of them. You want to tell them what the answer is? Yeah. Go ahead, tell them. All of them. All of them, exactly. Um, let's look at this one. We're going to guesstimate what percent of people without access to safe water live in rural areas. So safe water, clean drinking water, basically. Do you live more people in rural areas or urban areas? And Papa. Say 80. 80. Whoa, 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 this kid's good. And um, Papa. Yeah. How do... I'll leave that question for you to think about. Sorry to interrupt okay. you. And I'm going to let them try to answer this one. And the answer uh, is is poor people usually pay more. And we're going to look at a graph about this. And here How it is. How does lava overflow? We're going to do a geology class in another session yeah, talking about lava. How does lava overflow and hey, time in your house? We need to focus on water. So here's a graph. Mm -hmm. Because we're being timed. See, we're at five minutes, and so we need to keep on chugging along. Here's a graph dealing with the, the uh, issue of poor people paying more for water, and it's significantly more if you look at this graph. This is from Cognity. Uh, the yellow lines show people basically who are buying from street vendors, bottled water on the street, versus people in the red who have it piped into their house. So you pay a lot less if you buy it this way, but it's hard to get that infrastructure set up. So and it's a major issue right how there. much money do we use? Uh, and, and don't you do food waste. <laughs> You'll have to work a lot. And then food waste actually money. is another topic in our class. And we'll talk about food waste. But focus. What are we talking about now? Water. Water. Let's get back to water. Increased demand for water. Mm -hmm. We're going to see something here with MEDCs um, and LEDCs. <laughs> LEDCs means less economically developed. They're funny country. words. Those are funny words. <laughs> in LEDCs, agriculture really eats up a lot of the water, as you can see in this chart, whereas uh, MEDCs, it's industry. And you'll start to see some issues coming up as we Baba, throw this graph seven in. Minutes. Oh boy, we're, we're going slow then. I need to speed up. Demand for water will continue to rise, Kai. More people will want water as we get more people, as there's more population out there. As people get better standards of living, they tend to consume more water. You take longer showers, don't you, when you have seven bathrooms in your house. Who has that? And people who eat meat, we know already from this class, we know that cows and pigs and things actually use a lot of water to get a, a cow to eventually to the market. Um, and pigs that's, an, that's R rated. I should not talk about that. Oh yeah, he already knows it. Growth of industry. So growing industries, factories use a lot of water. Urbanization, a lot of water use as well in big cities. So that's uh, why we see more demand. <laughs> out there and i'm going to pause on this and you are going to take a second actually you're going to pause on this to read this question it says be an examiner and write three data Pete, analysis Pete, questions related to minutes. these graphs oh we're okay it's going up we have endless time but we don't want to do that to them so be an examiner write three data analysis questions related to these graphs um when we have class next we'll actually uh, I hope we could do a breakout room. Actually, that'd be really cool and see what kind of questions you asked and have each other answer them. So graph related questions. Do you see trends? What would you want your your students to answer about these graphs? Pretty uh, important to be able to ask and answer data analysis oh my questions. God, oh, it's so more tored. pictures. It's snowing outside almost. Yeah, and it's so hard. Also water, snow. By, here's an interesting fact, by 2025, big number, 
two-thirds of people will live in water stress and scarcity. You can see it on the bottom of that graph. Um, we need to be able to define and discuss water stress. Here's the definition. Get ready to write this one down. Um, it's when demand is more than supply. You can also look at it as when quality is low enough that it restricts our use. So really when there's the demand is more than the supply, it's similar to an economics idea. Then you'll see water stress out there. You see Egypt, for example, um, Algeria, Libya, and the north of Africa. Um, obviously less water there and the population's growing. People want the water, but it's not there. Let's get into a cool picture for you. Wow, green dots. What do you think that is? I don't know. Those are farms from a... a farms. They're all farms, circular farms. Pete Little Money Farms around here. Yeah, yeah, in Saudi Arabia, there's farms. And this is be over 17 years. This has changed from 2000 to 2017. I'm just swiping back and forth. And I did a screen recording on my iPad of this. And it's pretty interesting to see that Yep, it's increasing definitely in the seven years and that takes a lot of water to grow something like this in Saudi Arabia where there is not a lot of water available. Um, this is, you wanna push this arrow? Just one time, there you go, boom. Okay, this, we're gonna hop into the uh, Aral Sea and this is a very interesting spot because this used to be a very, very big sea and it's shrunk down significantly now um, and talks about why uh, reasons for water stress like what's going on to cause this a water military stress. boat oh yeah and a cool beautiful lake but it's pretty dry out there isn't it and there's boats yeah. in the desert which is very strange so here are some pictures of uh peach what is this <laughs> This is the Aral Sea in 1989, and it was really deep and you could swim everywhere. And then this is 2014 in the middle, and then that's 2019 on the right after a rain. So you can see some shallow water there, it looks like. Um, but overwhelmingly, the most of that sea has, has dried up. And the reasons for that water stress, well, here's your nice list. Um, over abstraction, that means people using water. 11 minutes, we gotta go. Here we go, 11 minutes. Over abstraction of surface water, so the, using the water right out of the top of the, a lake. Um, pollution is an issue, is a major issue because the less water there is, the more concentrate that water becomes. Um, inefficient use if you're spraying during the day in a hot in the hot sun. You know what happens to water when you it goes in the hot sun no. and it goes up in the air. That's evaporation. That's for rain. And then it becomes rain. This kid knows all about the water cycle, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Because my grandpa tells me that. Yeah, your grandpa's a pretty smart guy. Mm -hmm. Another big issue that we'll focus on in this class throughout the whole course, you hear me say over and over again, is climate change. And that's significantly changing where water is being distributed. And that leads to this very important question. How is climate change affecting water's regional or all, the water around different regions? I need to uh, play with that question there. Um, the, P12 minutes. 12 minutes. We're moving. we got a few more slides to do, too. It, big thing about climate change that we, that we think about with water is... Um, it's making more severe rains on the right side of your screen. And this is representing the U.S. This is from the EPA, Environmental and the, Protection Agency. And then you can't be skiing because it's too wet. You can't go skiing because it's just rain is not good on the ski mountain. We experienced that this year, didn't we? Yeah. Whoa. And other parts of the U.S. in this picture are, uh, they're having longer, heavier droughts. So not only do you get more rain in some areas, you get more droughts in some areas, and, and that's what we are, the data showing that climate change is significantly changing the stuff. We don't like that. So here's some data coming out of, or some projections based on models coming out of California. And- He does 13 minutes. Thanks for the time, he's my little timer. The data coming from California shows a lot less water snowpack up in the mountains, and that feeds a lot of people, a very large population in California that needs this water. Lots of data like this based on models. 
I'll put these links in the description below. Minutes. <laughs> I'll put the links in the description for a lot of these videos. And the last thing that we're going to end up with, two, two slides left actually, is I'd like you to watch these two videos in particular about South Africa. South Africa, that's where Layla comes from. That's one of his best friends, Layla, and that's where she's from. Um, and they had a big drought in 2018 that dried up one of their big lakes where the whole city got water from this place and then it dried up. Oh, not good. Um, so this kind of goes back to the, uh, the big idea at the beginning. And I'd like you to look at one of those notes. It says, fresh water resources can be sustainably managed using a variety of different approaches. Um, if that's true, I want you to think about it from different EVSs and be prepared to discuss that. How would an ecocentric, anthropocentric, and technocentric person um, try to manage this water source for Cape Town to fix this problem? 15 minutes, Pete. Well, we were done after, after this one. I think this is it, I think. Um, one question, again, I'd like you to try to answer right now when we finish up. You don't have to write this down, but give this one a go, is um, look at three make three deductions about this map so here's a map what's going on in this map dealing with water um and in our next class i will reveal a few things about what's going on in this water Food waste. now i'm going to stop there and we'll continue our next class uh by looking at the dams in ethiopia and uh, in china some of the major new dams and, in the world and and one else? of the class will talk about Food waste. Yes, we're going to have a class on food waste. You want to say goodbye to everyone? Bye. 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 See ya. That's my son, Kai. See you later, buddy. <laughs>